Uh, anyway, how do, how do we say how are you in, 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 in Polish? No, Czech is hello, right? But how are you? How is it? You're right. <laughs> You'll know it very, very good about after, after the, today, after. Oh, Czech, here's your, here it is. Let's see if that works. Yes, so hello. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to do something a little bit different because we had two talks about startups and uh, Arthur had some requests, you'll understand. And so, it's going to be a little bit different for you, for you to learn stuff. Uh, oh, oops. oops, show details. Oh, there it is. There's no more details to show. Hello. So, that's where I base. I'm based in, I'm based in, uh, in London. I used to be Yasu, I also speak Greek. I used to be based in, uh, in Cyprus. Before that, I used to be based in the Philippines, so Kumutsa, which is also, hello. And the country I want to talk about today, because Arthur asked me to, is uh, Japan, where I used to be based as well. So I lived in Tokyo for a while, and so when Arthur says, could you say something about Japan? I was like, how is that relevant for a Polish audience to talk about Japan and startup? I mean, I've been involved and I'm still involved in the startup uh, environment and ecosystem in, in Tokyo, but it's very, very different from here. And there's not that many lessons that you could learn. So I went a little slightly different way to basically to tell you a little bit about that country and what kind of lessons I learned and you can learn more in terms of product than in terms of startups. Uh, so in Japanese, anyone talks, speaks Japanese here? Ajimashite poru desu means hello, I'm Paul. It's a very polite way to say it. That's why I wrote here. Um, and what I'm going to do, can you see what's there? The guy is completely drunk, so that's how we're going to be tonight, I guess. <laughs> but these are actual, actual, this is an actual picture uh, uh, that you can find in the subway in, 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 uh, in Tokyo. You have manners uh, posters, what you cannot do in the subway. One of the things you cannot do, you cannot be drunk in the subway. Uh, and this is, the, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, most. yeah, exactly. Please do it at home. There's, all, there's, uh, there's a whole series, I can mail it to you, it's very, very funny. But the thing is, what I'm going to do, this is the Tokyo subway. And we're going to take one of, the, one of these lines today that you cannot actually really see. It's the line that goes, it's a little bit gray here. So that's a very complex, one of the biggest subway systems in the world. And I'm going to go through, I did it a little bit different. This is the Yamanote line. The Yamanote line is the circle line. It's just the line that goes all around Tokyo, it's the most popular one. And we're going to start with the station of Shinjuku. That's where I used to live. Imagine the station. There's every day seven million people commuting in that station. I come from Switzerland. We have seven million people living in Switzerland. <laughs> so have every new day I have a new Switzerland living there. And then what it does, Shinjuku means, means the new place to stay. That was very good for me because it was a very new place to stay, obviously. Uh, but it's also a symbol. Japan is very, very important for many things, but one thing in particular. Can you all raise your hands, please? Everybody, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, thank you. So you answer my question, it works every time. Who has a mobile phone? 100% of the people. Usually it works also with smartphone, depending on the country, because I've seen some people without a smartphone here. So, but let's say mobile phone. In some countries, actually, the number goes to 140%. Uh, because people have two phones, like I have two in my pockets actually, but uh, you know, so there's some ghosts or something. Um, so mobile, the mobile, oh, this is very low for you guys, the mobile place to stay. This is basically, in Japan, we had the first app store, you know, the app store that you know about iTunes uh, for Apple, and now you have the Android market and all the others, in 1999. 1999, so that's a long, long time ago. In 2010, so now two years ago, they killed the 2G network. There's no more 2G, 1G uh, for the mobile phones in Japan. You only have 3G and 4G in Japan. So it means it's very, very fast. This is why I'm, I'm going to talk about mobile today because it's the way of the future and I've seen that. I used to say, I lived in Tokyo, I've seen the future. Just a few numbers. There's basically 125 million uh, subscribers. Everybody has a mobile phone basically in Japan. I just wanted to give you some numbers. 88% of the people have broadband on their mobile phones. So 88% of the people have used the mobile phones to access the internet. And it's extremely fast. It's actually sometimes faster to have 3G in Tokyo than the broadband I have in Europe at home. All the numbers, I'm not going to because I only have 20 minutes, but basically uh, it's a very important ecosystem. Second station, Ikebukuro. Ikebukuro means, Ula, you can see the pond bag. Why the pond bag? The bag, it's a basically, there's a lake near to that station, 
and it looks like a big, a big pond, and like a bag of money. Facebook. Is everybody on Facebook here? Yes, right? No, you don't know Facebook, right? <laughs> so Facebook has, these are the numbers from three days ago, 901 million users in the world, out of which 500 million access Facebook through a mobile phone, okay? They're making, they have, and uh, that's the, uh, the Q1 2012 numbers, they have, they make 1 billion in revenue, which is a pretty impressive number, right? And 80, 807 million comes from advertising. Just keep that number in mind, you'll understand why it matters. In Japan, Facebook is not the biggest social network, by far. You have a company called Dine. Has anyone heard about it? Some people who have read TechCrunch might. It's a company that does social gaming, basically. They have, and look at the numbers, 25 million people, everybody on mobile, because there's nothing else but mobile. How much did they did in 2010? 1.3 billion in revenue, with only 25 million people compared to that number before. 1 billion for Facebook with 900 million people on it. Think about this. Bueno, next station. It's very good. If you like fake bags, girls, you go there. This is a whole alley of fake bags. It's really cool. Uh, bueno means your upper field. Uh, it's basically, I wanted to show you, the, the, that's exactly what I was telling you before, the vision of a mobile future. Everybody, you know, I've been in mobile now for, since 1998. I had a startup uh, called UB Mobile in 99, uh, 2000. Uh, we're doing, anyone remembers WAP, W-A-P? You know, there was a protocol, yeah. So we did the first uh, WAP portal for, uh, we worked for Nokia, we worked for, I did the first maps for Nokia actually. Worked for Nokia, we worked for uh, the United Nations, I worked with Yahoo, that was great. And, every, and since then, every year we're saying, it's a joke in the industry, this year is the year of mobile. This year is the year of mobile. This year, it was never the year of mobile. Well, in Japan it was always a year of mobile and I think we're reaching that point here in Europe. In, in, in the US. These are the numbers again. Facebook has 500 million people accessing, uh, these are estimates. 500 million is a, is a true number. 500 million people accessing Facebook through a mobile phone. Twitter, it's roughly 60 million. That's a calculation I made. It means 60 million people access Twitter through a mobile phone. The rest access through a desktop. The three other networks here are Japanese. Green, it's mobile only. 35, 35 million people. DNA 25, that's the one I showed you before, and Mixi. Mixi is actually the Facebook of Japan. It's a bit wrong, but whatever, it's a, that you understand. It has a, uh, it, 18 million people access it through uh, the, the mobile phone. What about Japan? In Japan, Facebook had 8.5 million users only, so it's a very, very low mobile uh, network. It grows very fast, because six months ago, they only had 5 million users, so it actually goes much faster. And they have uh, 15 million uh, monthly Unix, when you can see that Facebook had 20, uh, that Twitter has actually 25, and roughly 30 million accounts in, in, in Japan. Uh, it's, a num it's a number, it's the second, num second biggest, num uh, most active, sorry, uh, country in the world when it comes from, uh, for Twitter, after the first one being, of course, the US, the third one be being uh, Brazil. And the record, have you heard about record, where's the TPS, a tweet per second? So basically, Twitter has usually, when there's a big event, they have uh, like you know the end of the World Cup, the final of the World Cup, the final of the Euro, the Super Bowl. They had the count how many people tweet about a special event or something per second. The record was always Japanese. It was was Japan was playing the World Cup, and suddenly this, and it was only roughly nine nine thousand tweets per second about an event. This was done in December 20, 2011, 25,000 tweets per second. You know what it was about? It was about uh, just a movie. Uh, you know Ghibli, have you, have you ever seen this, uh, the, uh, the animation from Japan from Ghibli? Anyone? Bocoroso, all these, yeah. There's one, this, all, this movie was shown on TV and there's one line, one line in the movie that it's been, the movie was released in 1987, and nobody understands that line. It was always very obscure. And at the exact moment where that line was said on TV, it was on the biggest channel, the whole Japan started tweeting about it. It tweeted that line. And for like an hour, even my own feed was freaking filled with that line. Meaning that people, Japanese are very, very engaged. That's also where we're leaning to. That was just an anecdote for you guys. 
I'm lost the... Hello? Nope. Sorry for that. Yes, thank you. Basically, and this is what is important in, that, in, in, in Japan for you guys, because this is what are we living at. Privacy, anonymity, mobility. This is what, is, what uh, the Japanese web is about, and this is where we are leading. Mo mobile, I just talked about it, I don't have to repeat it. Privacy is a subject we talk and talk and talk about. In Japan, it's much more elaborate than Facebook or even uh, other, uh, other networks like Pinterest. But anonymity, this is the biggest thing in Japan. No one, almost no one, and explains why Facebook is not popular, people do not share their name and information online. They use fake names, avatars. They use, you know, like you can do on Twitter, basically. This is why Twitter is more, um, is more successful than, 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 than Facebook. But if you think about it, Instagram, you've all heard about Instagram. It's a similar thing. You don't have to use your ring name. Path. Has anybody used Path here? Yes. You know what Path is. Path is, is basically, it's a social network based on Dunbar's theory that tells that you cannot not have managed more than 150 friends. So it basically locks you to have n no more than 150 friends and everything is completely private. So nothing can be shared uh, if, you don't, if you're not the friend of that person, you cannot see anything, which is not what Facebook did, because now Facebook is it's public. Optionally public, but public. This is what Japan also learned to teaches us. These networks will be more and more important. People will look more and more about privacy, more and more anonymity if it's public, more and more private networks. I mean, the, the, the other one is obviously maybe, if, uh, have, you, have you guys heard about Pair? Pair is basically a social network just for two people. You and your girlfriend, your mistress, your wife, your uh, whatever you choose. It's just for two people. Just, it's just an anecdote but to show you that people are looking more and more into sharing stuff with people they actually know very well. And Facebook, Facebook is a, the, the big boat and then you want to go for the smaller, sailing, leaner boats. This is what, uh, and this is what Japan has always done. This is what we're going towards. But the other thing that you have to realize is what was the, the three things Instagram Pair and path. Can you see what's the pattern with th these three social networks? Can you tell me? Mobile. Sorry? It's mobile. It's only mobile. And this is something I say to startups I advise. Think about it. Do you actually need to have services that actually can be taken from the web? Do you need that or not? Instagram was bought for $1 billion. We can talk about hours for hours if it was worth it or not but it was mobile only. All these networks are mobile only. You use Facebook on your, on your phone, right? Do you see any advertising? Do you see any? You see nothing. The problem with these social networks now, they're not making money. And Facebook, even though I said before they have a hundred, a one billion of revenue, most of the money is made through ads. I've shown you the, the number before. You don't see the ads on the mobile. That's a big problem for Facebook. Where are they going to make money from? Path, where are they going to make money from? Instagram, so now it's Facebook, so it's too late. Here, where are they going to make money from? I'm coming back to DNA. I told you $1.3 billion of, of uh, revenue. Uh, advertising is only 10% of this revenue. 90% is, some, can anyone guess? Not Alex, because he knows the answer. Virtual goods. You sell, you sell stuff that are completely virtual. And when you think about it, people think it's stupid here in Europe, in the US as well. You know, you know Facebook, you can send a, a, a cake, you can buy a little cake and send it for, for um, a birthday present. Have you ever done that? No, okay, your kids will do, that's one shoe. Because we think it's stupid. We think that well, our mental framework is that if I want to say happy birthday, of course I can send a message. If I want to send a cake, I send a real cake or a postcard. We're still in that touch base feeling. The only thing different with us in, in J Japan and below for South Korea and China, it has already been passed there. For them, it doesn't need to be touched to be shared. But if you think about it, you're already there. I'm not gonna do, this is one of the speech I do, I'm not gonna do it for too long. But you already are all doing virtual goods without realizing it. If you have a Mercedes and not a Toyota, 
you have a virtual good because you're buying not only the brand, you're buying the brand, you're buying the lifestyle, you're buying the status. Oh, I have a Mercedes, I'm very important, I'm very rich, I show off, you know, so that's virtual. When you buy a phone for a thousand dollars, even if it's okay, maybe the network is gonna, is, the, the network is, is gonna um, subsidize it, you're buying a lot of virtuality. You already do that. When you actually, when you bought, people used to buy DVDs. Now, what do you do? You stream it. Okay, you can, I'm not gonna talk about piracy. This is virtual. You're buying virtual good. Music is now virtual. Movies are now virtual. So basically, the only steps that is lacking now is that we will go from these to more and more and more and more goods. And this is what Japan has already done. So 90%, so think when you actually do a service, think about ways to make people pay for things that are, do not, can be, cannot be touched. Akihabara, you all know Akihabara. I just put it there for you guys because I know geeks love Akihabara. This is electric town. This is where if you, if you go once in Japan and if you love technology, you go to Akihabara, you'll find every single thing ever. The, the biggest department stores of electronics are there. It's really fun. Akihabara actually means the field of autumn leaves. So it's kind of a old, it's, it's antithetic because Akihabara seems to be very lo uh, looking towards the future, but it's actually a very old, old part of, of Tokyo. Tokyo, the Japan, was, used to be called the Galapagos. The Galapagos, why? Because they had a completely different ecosystem. It was, comp like I've just shown you, it was, Facebook doesn't work in Japan, so it was completely different. And now we're reaching the end of the Galapagos, meaning that Japan resembles more and more this country and other countries. You might not realize it if you've never been there, but it's changed. You know when it changed? It changed on July 11, 2008. Can somebody tell me what happened on July 11, 2008? Uh, I did. I waited 13 hours to get it. Come on. Thank you. It was the release of the iPhone in Japan, the first. The, the iPhone 3G, because there's no 2G networks anymore. The iPhone 3G was the first uh, iPhone release in Japan. It happened on July 11, 2008. It's since, since then, it completely changes. These are phones that still exist. These are phones that were selling in Japan. We call it, it's a Galakay. Basically, these are phones that had TV, camera, you can browse the web, you have email, you have everything. It's, it looks like a smartphone. Some people call them feature phone. But they were not, they were completely closed. And suddenly the iPhone came out, it changed everything. They had, you know, portal internet, carry email, you know, one hand operation, customer loyalty, everything was there. To the point that actually, this is why I put it here, Nokia, which uh, flew yesterday was the biggest uh, phone seller in the world for 17 years. Nokia got out of the Japanese market in 2008. They couldn't sell any single phone. And suddenly Apple came in, and that's not only Apple, of course, because Android is more important than Apple in, in Japan, but meaning it changed, it changed everything. That's just for you guys, ten, more than 10 million iPhones in Japan and more than 20 million Android phones. But expect, the, the biggest thing is that by 2015, Analysts predict that only smartphones will be sold in Japan. There will be nothing else than smartphones. And this is exactly what's going to happen here. This is exactly what's going to happen in the US. We will not have any other type of phones. There will be variations, but not any other type of phones. Tokyo, of course, is the main city. The, actually, Tokyo means the eastern capital, Tokyo. Which, for me, it means that there are a lot. Do I have, do I have Wi-Fi? on that uh, computer where he's come from or not? There's a movie playing. Do I have it or not? No, never mind. So I'm just going to tell you the story instead of showing the movie. No worries. Basically, NFC. Who knows what NFC is? Okay, do, does that, do you have any NFC standard here in, in Poland or not? I guess not. Like, we don't even have that in Europe. I mean, in the UK, we have a few. Um, um, Starbucks tried a little bit. Basically, in, in Tokyo, I can do, in Japan, I can do everything with my mobile phone. But NFC plays a, a very important part. Uh, the, the movie I want to show you, I'm sorry I cannot make, it's actually not in Tokyo, but in Akihabara. You go to the, to the bathroom, you know, the public toilet. And the only way to get in is with your phone. <laughs> you actually have to swipe your phone and the door opens. If you don't do it, the door doesn't open. Actually, it takes you, you're being built, just it's less than 10 cents. You have to pay 10 cents to enter, but it's done through your phone. That's the movie I wanted to show you. It's a movie actually I took myself, but next time. Shinagawa, Rear Very Goods. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. Do you know what that is? Can you, can you make it out? Huh? ATM machine? Uh, what? ATM machine? It's not ATM. Actually, it's a vending machine. Vending machine, you have, you have vending machines all over Tokyo, but this one is a little different because of this. 
Oh shit, that doesn't appear good. Never mind. Basically, there's no more. The whole machine is a screen. And the whole machine is touch based. And the machine actually recognizes you. You look at the machine, the machine, it doesn't really work with people like me because I'm not Japanese, so I'm not in a database. But if, <laughs> if you're a girl, and if you're that tall, if you have that kind of hair, it will actually recommend drinks on your fac facial expressions. Same thing for guys. And everything is touch based. It's really fun. It's actually, that's, it's in the Shinagawa station. It's actually really fantastic. It's a bit gimmicky, obviously, but to tell you, the most important part of it is that I just wanted to say that as an anecdote. I pay with what? With my phone. Exactly. Everything in Japan is done through a mobile phone. 50% of the people have tap and go phones. Musically, you, you, I, I enter the subway, that's what I used to have. I enter the subway, I do that with my mobile phone. I want to buy a Coke, I do that with my mobile phone. I want to buy, I want to go to a convenience store, buy cigarettes. Yeah, no, I smoke. I use my mobile phone. I want to go to McDonald's, I use my mobile phone. McDonald's is going to come, come up in a minute. Uh, basically, just to show you the market in Japan is 10 billion compared to one in the US. I'm not going to bore you with numbers, I'm going to send it to you. This, you know, this brand, right? McDonald's. This is the biggest ever they had in Japan. It's a it's tamago. Tamago is a, it's the egg on top. There's a double here. It's re that's really massive. For ja imagine Japanese, they're not very tall people. This is really massive. What I want to talk about is because Japan created, uh, McDonald's created a, a system when you go with your mobile phone, you buy with your mobile phone your, your menu, then you have a coupon that's automatically given to you. And the next time you go, you get a rebate for that, uh, for the next meal. But the thing is actually, they know your age because you have to register, it's, it's opt-in. Your age, address, they have, a, they have a profile on you. So they will recommend you food, they will give you the right kind of coupons for you to actually uh, go and, and, and recommend the, you know, for instance, you're a girl, so you're more into salads, you're a guy, you, you, want, you want bigger, you want the big thing that before, and you will get every time 10%, 20%, even sometimes 50%, you will get, you know how many people are connected to that system? 16 million people. That's actually 12% of the Japanese are registered to the McDonald's website just because they use these mobile coupons. So when everybody talks about Groupon or Groupon, I think Groupon is bullshit. Because Groupon just tries to sell whatever to whoever with no loyalty system. This is a real loyalty system. You, you might not like McDonald's, but this is a real loyalty system. They know who you are, they reward you every time you go, they give you a new coupon, they, uh, but it's a coupon that is actually worth to you because they know who you are, so they actually say, oh, you most likely would like a chicken salad, or you most likely want the biggest freaking burger you can have, and no, it's not good for your health, but at least this is real, real loyalty. And this is also, this is a type of business model that we will have, we will face very, very shortly in, in Europe and the US. This is why we'll work, not Groupon. And of course, you know, what's the mascot of McDonald's here in, in, uh, in Poland? Do you have the Ronald McDonald guy? It's a clown, right? Okay, sorry girls, this is the mascot in Japan. <laughs> Yeah, you see, it's very kind of nice, right? That's also the reason why you go actually to McDonald's in Japan. Um, sorry, so, Ebisu. Ebisu is the next station. No, we're almost done. The very cool thing about Ebisu is that they have actually a beer factory. All the startups events, we used to go there, so we have like lots and lots and lots of beer. It's, uh, it belongs to Sapporo, maybe you know the brand, but it's really cool. So that, but the reason I want to stop to Ebisu is to take another line for a minute and go to Rompongi. There's another story I want to tell you about, also something very fun. Uh, Lopongi, have, has anybody gone to Tokyo ever in here? Okay, have you, you know Lopongi? Okay, so Lopongi is, an, is really not my favorite part of Tokyo. A lot of tourists go there, a lot of GIs because the army is there, the US army is there, and a lot of expats. It's very expensive, you have big shopping malls too in particular, and you have a lot of entertainment clubs, if you know what I mean guys, uh, and you have a lot of clubs, and you have a lot of... And in the middle of that, you have this, which is a pet shop. So they sell dogs and cats. And I was like, why is a pet shop in the middle of an entertainment you know, street and clubs and people at 4 a.m.? And the thing is, it's open 24 seven. You go at 2 a.m. in the morning, you can buy a dog. 10 in the morning, you can buy a dog. And I was like, how do they work? And then one day, because I was having fun and I was going out at 4 a.m. in the morning, I understood. In the window, they put 
little kittens, you know, the tiny cats and tiny dogs. This is really cute. But at 4 a.m. in the morning, when you're drunk, and especially when your girlfriend is drunk, you buy them. <laughs> oh, it's so cute, I want one. And you buy them. This is, this is not an anecdote, but basically this is impulse buying. And this is also something that will matter more and more for any of the mobile, the mobile services you can do is impulse. The reason why Instagram works very well is because you take a picture, you share it. Very quick. Very quick. The, all the, all the, the networks and all the services that will work on mobile are impulse-based. You want something, you want something. Now you have it. This is exactly how this pet, so, pet, uh, pet store works. And this is one example for music. I'm in my car, I want to listen, uh, listen to a song. Oh, this is so, so cool. I press a button, I put Shazam, the sound house. You know, these are music recognition systems. It recognizes the song, and then I have a choice. Either I press Spotify or iTunes, I buy the song. The process takes me less than a minute. It used to be that uh, I would listen to a song on the radio. Oh, what was that? I have to call the radio. Uh, what was the name of that song? Then I go to the music store. Do you have that song or you don't have it? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm going to order it. I'm going to come in two weeks. This is not impulse. Impulse, and I want it now. And if you can create these type of impulse like they, they did here, and especially on mobile, because mobile, you have it with you. So that's the impulse drive, the mobile with you. Then you have a successful business model. And last station, this is a little less fun, Shibuya. Shibuya. I should have shown you all the pretty girls there, but I'm not going to do that. There's a, a very famous spot in Shibuya. Everybody stop, stops. That's in, uh, it seems it, Shibuya means sober valley. But there's a dog called Hachiko. There was even a movie, I think, made in the U.S. It's a dog that uh, there's a statue of this dog in front of the station. It's a very popular place to actually meet in uh, in Tokyo. That dog. Uh, the story was he had a. It was 1923, I think, or something. He was going with his master every day to the station. The master was going to work and back, and, then, and the dog was waiting for him at the station when he was coming back, and that he did like for years and years. And one day, the master didn't come back because the master actually had a stroke and died. And the dog kept doing, kept coming to the station every morning and every night for nine years. So it became obviously very popular. But the only, the only lessons I want to give you with that, because you're in startups, this is dedication. And the dog came for nine years. I didn't care about what happened. He was coming and coming back and again and again and again and trying again to see if he could see his master. And this is also a lesson that Japan can, 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 can teach us. You know that Japan had a massive, massive earthquake and tsunami last year. Uh, I wasn't there. I was actually in Austin with that guy uh, for South by Southwest. But they rebuilt. They restarted, they rebuilt, they restarted, they rebuilt. And this is a lesson that is extremely, this is the most valuable lesson for you guys. You're gonna fail, things are gonna happen that look like shit, you don't have a control. Japan doesn't have a control on earthquakes and tsunamis and nothing. But still, they rebuilt, they rebuilt, they re they're not complaining, they never complain. Japanese never, never, never complain, they're just rebuilt. This is the biggest lesson. All the mobile and everything is great, but the biggest lesson I use as startups is please, please be dedicated. Arigato, and that's my name. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Paul. That was, that, was, that was too long. Questions? Guys, questions? First question from Yaro Bajala. Yaro Mir? Cool. So you just showed us a bunch of really weird and disturbing stuff. Uh, so in your opinion, <laughs> what is like the most uh, weird mobile application you uh, ever had experienced? In Japan? Yeah, in Japan. I don't, I'm not going to say weird, but I'm going to tell you an example of something that really works well. Uh, you know, you must have this for the public transportation system. You want to know what time is the train and I want to go from here to here. So in Japan, they have one thing that not only gives you, uh, the, it was not on the iPhone, it was on one of these Keitai, so the, the traditional phone. I would say I want to go from one station to another, but it was not only giving the times, it was not only giving me the way, it was not only give, giving me the transfer times, it was also if it knew, the, the application knew, oh, it's raining today. So the, the, the way I'm going to show you to, to me is not going the way that is outside. I'm going to show you a way which avoids the rain. These are the type of applications, and they work only for one reason, and this is something that all countries should learn, is because they have a lot of open data. Data is actually, these applications are being able, because not only the public transport system actually gives data about the, uh, the, the, the train, but also because, of course, they have the meteorological society that gives them da da data about the rain, but then they also have all the mapping systems. They can know, and when I say inside, it was not especially inside a building, oh, if you go to that street, there will be something that will protect me from the rain. 
This was an application. It was before, it was 2007. So they have a lot of these, they have like very crazy applications. I'm going to show you some if you want, but it's, they're not, usually the most crazy applications uh, involve sex, I'm sorry. So I'm not going to show them on stage now. All right, another question. There is, all right, I can come to you with the mic. Here you go. Hello. Uh, what about the senior citizens uh, out there cool with technology? Yeah. Uh, grandpas swinging with their phones and stuff? No, actually, yes, because, you know, Japan is also, it's also a lesson for us in, uh, Western, in Western Europe and in the U.S. We're aging where society is, I mean, and Eastern Europe is, of course, better for that, but we're, we're aging very fast. We're more and more people uh, getting old and they actually stay uh, alive much longer than we used to. So, you know, in Japan, every time there's a record of somebody lived uh, forever, they have like 120 years. It's usually a Japanese guy or Japanese woman. They have the highest expectancy for living. But that means that the society is changing for them as well. Because you don't, you cannot, of course, live the same way when you're 30, 40, when you're like 95. And you see that the society is adapting to them. So not only in mobile technologies, you have a lot of uh, technologies that help them, you know, the, with the, for instance, the talk, you know, like Siri on the, on the iPhone, you have a lot of these technologies that allow people to just to talk to their phone so they, because they cannot see anymore. But you can see everything. You can go in the train and you'll see the size of the doors are now bigger. You can see that there are a lot of things you can actually um, um, handle yourself and not to fall. Everything is made for the, the aging population. I'm not going to... It could be an entire speech. I have lots, lots, lots of examples. We can talk about it, but it is also something. If you, if you have, I think this is one of the biggest market uh, in the future. Is you know the third age or the fourth age, basically people over 65 and people over 80. There's nothing made for them right now, and they're learning technology in Japan. They all have a mobile phone and they're using it, and they all have a computer with broadband. They're using it, and more and more of these services, and they have money, especially in Japan because Japan, you know, they save a lot of money. Uh, because they, they do not trust to save the, the system, so they save a lot, so they have a lot of savings, and then they can actually use it. And it's the same in our countries. We, we have an aging population that has some money, and when you look at Instagram, it's not made for them. When you look at, so there's a huge market, I believe, and Japan is starting to understand that. It's, so that's a very, very good question, and I think it's a very good lesson you, you, we could all learn about, about Japan. A final question before we uh, go? Uh, sure, hi. Uh, you spoke a bit about anonymity, right? Oh, uh, sorry. I spoke a bit about anonymity on, um, in Japan, and I was actually wondering what the key ingredient was uh, where people actually give out their information, because you spoke about social media and that the fact that they, they don't give out their credentials, but when you spoke about McDonald's and things that they're, they're interested in coupons and discounts, yeah, they exactly. give it out. So is that the actual key yeah, ingredient? Yeah, you, you, exactly. You answer, money? Yeah, you answer your own question. Basically, they give only their... The, the, first of all, privacy laws in Japan are very, very tight, much tighter than here in, in, uh, in Europe. For instance, you know Google Street View? When you actually... There was a case in Germany, in Germany also quite tight about privacy, but in Japan it was, Google Street View was uh, trialed on the, uh, in court for a long time, and actually there's almost nothing, everything is blurred on Google Street View now, uh, in, J in Japan. You, people can opt out and everything. Basically, G Germany did a little bit of the same. So that's the first thing. The second thing, yes. So since privacy laws are so protecting the consumers and, the, and the, the citizens, the only way for brands to actually know and have data about them is to actually make them want to share the information. So we, know, we share the information on Facebook because just we find it fun. Uh, but we don't realize that actually if we don't pay anything is that because we are the product, because we, you know, they get our information and that's based on our information they can sell us stuff. In Japan it's basically the opposite. It's another reason why Facebook doesn't work. You have, McDonald's is one of the most famous examples. They actually, because of the coupons, because to be very honest, Japan is also a very coupon-based country. Everywhere you go, you have a coupon. You know, traditional coupons. I'm not talking about mobile phones. You go to a restaurant, and in the end, they give you a coupon. Like, oh, what do I do with it? Or you, you go to Tesco, and they print out the thing. At the end, you have a coupon, so you bring it back. To, so that's, to be honest, it's, it's part of their culture. But for them to have data, they actually had to give them, you know, rebates, loyalty schemes. This is the only way they get the data. There's no other way. And I think that this is something we're going to experience in Europe and the U.S. as well, especially in Europe, because we're more or so more keen about privacy is that less and less, I don't know about the privacy laws in Poland, but less and less privacy laws will be tighter and tighter and tighter because we will, governments will react against, you know, Facebooks and, all, and, and Googles. So at the end of the day, the only reason if you want to actually make people share is that 
to sell them something valuable for them. We went, and, but the problem is valuable for them is for a single person. This is why not for like Groupon. We're going to sell for like let's hope that 20 million people buy the same thing. No, find a, a system to have one person. But this is another discussion. But you you were answering your, your own question. This is how, why it works. Yes. All right. Anyone else? You can you, can, see, you can talk to me uh, yeah, later Paul? because I'm I'm being on stage too long here. Arigato. <laughs> Thank you very much.